I understand that uh, you have taken a many picture of uh, UFO and uh, of the yeah. Indian. Um, how could you, you know, take those photos? <laughs> it's a very funny thing. I have my film camera, my photo camera. Yes. If I go outside, the most of the time, I carry them with me. Mm -hmm. But I never can get a picture mm -hmm. if I not get the order to shot one. Mm -hmm. If I can get the picture only by an order of the Pleiadians, and then I will get a real good picture. Did they tell you a reason why they order to take a picture? <laughs> For proof. Very amazing, amazing pictures. And uh, may I ask you your background? Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about your background? I mean, your profession, what you're yeah. doing? You see, in my whole life I was working by about 300 or 320 different professions. 300? Mm. Oh. So, uh, uh, what were you doing when... Just now I call myself as a watchman. Watchman? Mm. Well, what do you mean, just uh, looking at the sky? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe in Chapman too you have the night watchman. Uh-huh. Something like that. So you were watching... The last business I was doing was a watchman here in Switzerland. Oh, well... And now I'm living from my rent only by 830 Swiss francs a month with my wife, three children and two other persons. So how, how can you get the money? That's a, a rent from the government. Rent? Yeah, for my cut of the arm. Oh, I see. Oh. It's about the third part of that money what needs an uh, other family in Switzerland with uh, five or six people. Mm. That means uh, government giving you the money or yeah. the company? Mm -hmm. The government? It's uh, a government company. Uh, I see. Mm. And they pay a monthly rent. Mm for my cut at arm, oh, 830 francs. Uh, <laughs> so before then you were working as a w watchman mm -hmm. uh, with, with some company? Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, oh, some factory uh, or? In a factory. In a factory. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, all the time in Zurich by a uh, watchman company. Mm. Oh, I see. Mm. And uh, Sem 1975? Uh, 1974, I finished my job. Uh -huh. And still, from that time, I live in from my rent only. Oh, I see. I'm writing, take my photographs and everything. I see. Now, so you were... I'm writing down everything from the contacts. Mm -hmm the knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, knowledge mm -hmm. the spiritual teaching and everything. I see. Now, uh, when you take a picture, mm -hmm. uh, could you describe how you're going to do, how you do like this? It's very easy. Yes? You know? and that's a very simple old Japanese photo camera. Yes. I can turn here, you see? Yes. Oh. And that I can do very quick by one hand, but the single camera I can use. Uh -huh. You can't change anything here. You can see by yourself. Okay. Well, it's very easy to use in one hand. Mm -hmm. I say that's the single one I can use. All the other they are too complicated because you need two hands to handle them. Just 
Put it this way. Yeah. It's very easy. That's very yeah. easy. I see. And it's very quick. And, uh, you know, when you, you are taking a picture, mm -hmm. there should be uh, many people walking on the road or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, living in the house mm -hmm. and, uh, or, you know, running the mm -hmm. car. Mm -hmm. They might see the same thing. You see, that's very funny. If you take this here, mm -hmm. I think that's now the ship. I'm staying here with my camera. Mm -hmm. Everything around the ship, up, down, behind, right side, will be closed. Nobody can see anything. There is a free line only to see something through here, the camera. Mm -hmm. Or to my face, to my eyes. Mm -hmm. Then I'm staying here get the picture, uh, to get the picture from the ship. You stay there by the lamp or by the tree. Mm -hmm. You can't see anything because there the sighting will be closed for you. It only will be open this way to the camera. And this happens the most time. How could they do it? I don't know. <laughs> they have, you know, how about this one? You, you use the tripod with this? With them, yeah. Yes. I put it on the tripod. Mm -hmm. Then I have here an automatic. Mm -hmm. And then it works. I see. And two, it's a camera that I can handle by one hand only. Mm -hmm. It's here. I see. That's the single one I can find. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, uh, when was it? It's, uh, it was outgoing winter time, I think 1976. Six. The same year of that uh, young shot. It was the same day. The uh, same day? Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, yeah. how do you. Saucer coming. Um, um, we have to, to go there to the front to tell you. Mm -hmm. um, you see there behind the mountain. Mm -hmm. Yes. About a third part from here to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Yes. The ship was moving from the left side to the right side. And uh -huh. Right side, left side, left side, right side. Mm -hmm. Always on that way. Yes. And then, at later time, before it left, by sunset, it moves behind that tree. Mm -hmm. You have seen the picture, and there I got three pictures I by see. my photo camera. So, okay. how many hours are together from uh, the beginning? All together, I've been here up for about two hours. Two hours? Yeah. How many pictures did you take? Uh, between... 70, 90, 100, I don't know exactly. Hmm. Most of them I lost somewhere, stolen, <laughs> I don't know. So this is the site where uh, you took the picture the UFO. And uh, actually, how did it come? Did it fly? Yeah, at first I took the film, mm -hmm. the movie, and then it was flying always that line, yeah. forward and back, forward and back. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, when it was going down the sun, also by the sunset, mm -hmm. It moves here behind, a mm -hmm. few meters behind the tree, and then I got here three pictures. Oh. And the sun was somewhere there behind over the horizon. 
and how many minutes it stayed here. Oh, this was maybe 20 seconds, 30 seconds, not more. Mm -hmm. And in that time I got this three picture that was maybe, I don't know exactly, maybe five meters behind, three meters behind, I don't know. And when was it, this one? Uh, that was 1976, I think. Mm. 76? Yeah. It should be autumn. Yeah, okay. it's uh, outgoing winter time. Right. And it was uh, right after the sunset or before sunset? No, before sunset. You see here behind, mm -hmm. behind the ship is the sun. Yes. So maybe six o'clock, six. Between five and six, six I think it was. Yeah. It was evening time. Mm -hmm. But the time I don't remember exactly. But I think it's a very huge one, like this. Um, mm -hmm. And where was the uh, UFO? Uh, about three to five meters here somewhere behind here, the tree. Yes. Yeah, somewhere here up. Oh. Mm. And nothing behind the tree. There is nothing behind the tree. A deep valley. That's all. Right. But this ship is very huge. Mm -hmm. Maybe seven meter. Seven meter across. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, you can't go over all the world to tell each human being. Mm -hmm. This happened now on that way. That's now the truth. You can get the analysis from a computer, mm -hmm. but two the people not will believe. Right. So okay. if they see the ship by themselves, mm -hmm. they get the picture, then for them it is true. But right. if somebody else get the picture, they say that's a fake only. Right, right. So did they tell you why they are not going to show up himself? I mean, they themselves, you know, why they don't come uh, visibly? Mm -hmm to the people. Yeah, you see, they told me different reasons. One of them is they thinks and means and says if they turn over the sky at day or night time mm -hmm. and the people will see them, the yeah. earth people here, they will come to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Maybe they will turn over in their mind or mm -hmm. something like that mm -hmm. and it will come a panic. Mm -hmm. The other thing they say they have to be very careful about their own weaves from their own body and about the weaves from the earth humans if they come together they will turn over in their mind because they are living in every case on a very much higher level than the people here. And if they go to show them by their flying around the earth, the humans, the earth humans, they will try to catch them Mm -hmm. They will, by the Air Force, send up planes, fighters mm -hmm. against them. And about all that, they are very afraid. Mm -hmm. But I think they have, uh, you know, uh, much better science than us. Mm -hmm. So they can you know, protect themselves mm -hmm. for, from, the, from the Air Force attack. Yes, of course, that's very easy for them, but 
You see, I think it isn't useful. Mm -hmm. Why they shall show them to the humans if they go to fight against them? Mm -hmm. It will make trouble for them, for us humans from this earth, and maybe for other ones. Because the Pleiadians, they aren't the single one who comes to Earth from other stars. These are the landing tracks again. Mm -hmm. Of one of both ships. Is this also a first, uh, first time you got uh, the, the landing, landing tracks? Track. Yeah, yeah. And this is the, uh, the west side now, <coughs> and the ship. The ships they left to the north side and and there you can see how big are the trucks. Hmm. Very big. So it was almost a seven meter diameter. No, the landing trucks they have 182 centimeter each one. Uh -huh. And three of them are by each ship. And that's a place where I got the first movie picture. There was a tree stain, how you see it there, where it's mm -hmm. hanging over them, the ship. And that tree was eliminated later by Semyasi too. Mm -hmm. And that picture I got, I think, February or March 1975, mm -hmm. in the evening time, about half past five. It was mm -hmm. snowing, raining. And dusty and in the front between the tree and my film camera there was some people working a farmer an old man and a child mm -hmm. and if you have good eyes you can see the ship it isn't in the front of the tree it is a little bit behind the tree. Yes. And this flying, doesn't the normal flying of these ships, mm -hmm. that's for demonstration only. Mm -hmm. If they fly on the real normal way, you have seen there how I was moving the tree mm -hmm. now. If they fly on the normal way, they have a good line without this foolish jumping and everything. I see. Uh, will you repeat it again? Mm -hmm. いや、あの部分だけを独立ピックアップと考えに、あの、前をね。これだったかな。じゃあ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ
because it comes to the front, overflies the three and then it's shown. Right. Again. Now it's going on. You see? Oh, there. Okay. 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 Did you say uh, when did it happen? Uh, summer 1975. Yes. June or July. Yes. And I'll tell you here the film is several times cut. Hmm. Somebody do it. Uh, men in Germany because I didn't understand anything to cut a film. Oh, I see. And then he was doing for me and some pieces he took out and cut it to, uh, and put it together again and... Hmm. Still. Hmm. Yeah. You see, and the ship is about uh, half away mm -hmm. to the road there down. Oh. When we were staying yesterday by the forest. Yes. You remember? Yes. Uh, that's the first place in Rumlikum we was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And here the ship is jumping away. There the film isn't cut that on that place when the ship jumps away. It's nearly the speed of light and you can't see anything. It is here and it goes. There is some other thing here. Mm -hmm. You see, and at that time when the ship leaves, yes. then was gone all the wind, all the voices of, of birds and everything that's happening around. And you can't hear anything, you can't feel anything, not a nice piece of wind or something. It all comes back at that time when the ships, uh, the ship, Returns. And myself, by the camera, I had something like an electric shock. ちょっと見たくなるじゃないですか。あ、切った。いいよ。うん。いらっしゃる。さっきのがあったと思う。めちゃくちゃ。じゃあ、見て。プレス。で、これはどうしたえ、見て。プレスで、これやってます。うん。
うんこれの方がいいや
small electric shock. Oh, you got... Uh, Each time when she was jumping. Mm, you got to Why, sleep, I don't so. know. Uh -huh. That's the east side where yes. we got yesterday the pictures. Oh. There behind in the middle, you yes. see, in the saddle, the mountain where we was this afternoon. Where you also go? Where we was climbing up the road. What is the month? The mountain where yeah, behind where we was climbing up today by the car. I know. see. Uh, what month? Uh, Langenberg, I think, is the name or something like that. Where we got today the pictures, mm -hmm. you know. 1975? Two, yeah. Um, uh, no, 1976. Mm -hmm. On March 28th or 29th of March. Mm -hmm. So this is the first uh, film which we, we could take, you could take three of the uh, craft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, craft. yeah. I think where we leave the other two ships there, the film is cut, but I think. Mm -hmm. You know the wind there, mm -hmm. and that wind is there of the whole year so strong. Mm -hmm. Is he coming back again? Okay. Yeah, several times. She turns well, from the left to the right and back. You see, they are still within the range. Oh, you're not sure. When I left the place there, I was frozen outside and inside. Mm. Yeah, it should be. It's always very cold there, too in the summertime. I see. But this is winter. Yeah, that's oh, winter. I start to go to Europe and after that, I can repeat it. something to do boots, you know, <laughs> some, some, some such kind of things. How can I adjust the uh, frame? Yes. It's okay. Wow, it's so cool. 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 
下手なズームで申し訳ない下の山見えてますか I told you to come around, I was jumping because I was frozen and make like a zittering. That's my working camera. Can you see the camera? Yes, it's the camera. Ah, okay. Okay, I'm going to see it. Okay, I'm going to see it. You see here I have done exactly the same thing than in room like when I was looking over the camera and working with the zoom. Ah. So you didn't, you didn't see the window? No. No? <laughs> yeah, always I was thinking to get the warm coffee. <laughs> Do you repeat it, please? Yeah. 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 Always on the same place. It wasn't moving. Yes. What is going on? On June 12, 1975, the Pleiadians directed Edward Meyer to the location where he would succeed in taking this remarkable 8mm movie footage. By comparing the size of known objects to that of the UFO, the approximate diameter appears to be 7 meters. Here the beam ship can be seen to float up and down in a gentle manner. But as we continue watching, we will soon realize that this film contains a rare sequence. The moment when the UFO disappears suddenly. Meyer says that the beam ship can travel through multiple dimensions. We assume that this is that moment of transformation. In this segment, not only does the craft disappear possibly to another dimension, but it also returns. Next, the film is checked to determine if some type of trick has been used. 
beginning the examination where the object disappears and reappears. Now, examine the film frame by frame. It is discovered that the actual disappearance occurs in only one frame, in less than one twentieth of a second. After extensive analysis was completed on this segment of the film, it became clear that there was no trickery involved. Now, examine the exact moment that the UFO reappears. This time as well, there is no detection of trickery. Surprisingly, when the craft appears, the frame becomes very bright. This means that there is some type of energy affecting the film itself. It occurs within one twentieth of a second, the exact time required for the ship to reappear. In June of 1975, Mr. Meyer set his 8mm movie camera on automatic, so both he and the beam ship could be captured in the same scene. Meyer explained that this is the location where he sat to wait for the craft to appear. Meyer took great pains to create this scene as he wanted to establish proof that he was indeed having contact with the Pleiadians. His method? Arranged to film he and the beam ship simultaneously. And then the second time I was sitting here. During the first few moments of this segment, the craft is not visible because the NTV video camera that filmed off of Meyer's original 8mm footage has a smaller viewfinder. The zoom work is being done by the Japanese video crew. The small camera is set on automatic and secured to the tripod. The beam ship can clearly be seen floating silently and gracefully while posing overhead. Meyer says a strange calm prevails just prior to the appearance of the craft. Even the birds in the area stop their singing and movements, becoming very still and quiet. Perhaps it is because birds and animals have the ability to hear or have the sensitivity to detect the unseen energy or frequencies of the UFO. Meyer shows Yaoi the location where the beam ship first appeared and explain that it moved from left to right, right to left, and then back again left to right. The beam ship can be seen hovering above the mountain at Hasenbo. Then suddenly the ship begins to move. Closely studying the movement of the craft, it seems possible that the object is suspended on a string, perhaps connected to a long pole but carefully watch the branches of the tree, which is to the right of the screen. It is obvious that the wind is blowing fiercely. But the beam ship remains perfectly still. This observation leads us to believe that the ship is not a small model suspended by a string. If the ship were suspended by a string attached to a pole, a different form of movement would be seen. The beam ship can be seen to stop in midair without any form of hesitation and no wind-related movements. If the object were a model suspended in some manner, it would react much differently in a strong, gusty wind. This ship stops and does not waver. When the beam ship begins to move, it sails smoothly without any hesitation. This indicates that there is no physical obstruction of any kind.
During a replay of the footage, a forward and backward movement will be observed as the craft stops, if it was suspended by something. For convenience sake, lines will be drawn where the ship stops and where it begins moving, affording the observation of any unusual wobbling or swaying. It is obvious that the beam ship stops abruptly. Zooming in on the beam ship, one can see a light, possibly some type of energy, as it begins to move. The understanding of what this is, or could be, is limited. Only theories exist. From the analysis of this footage, we know that there is a gusty wind, yet in contrast, the beam ship remains stable. At this time, Meyer was using the zoom lens on the 8mm camera. A difficult feat for a man with one arm and the reason for the lack of centering in the viewfinder. At times, the spacecraft emits a burst of light from the top of the cupulo and the flange or rim of the circular object. While filming this segment, Maya recorded the sounds of the beam ship, as indicated by the Japanese subtitles. Watching the footage and listening to the recorded sounds, one can readily determine that when the craft moves closer to the recorder, the strength of the noise increases, thus indicating the strong vibrational frequencies emitted by the ship. On March 29, 1976, Meyer took this outstanding series of photographs of three beam ships hovering over a wide valley near Bachtel Hornley. It is an extreme rarity to capture three UFOs in the same photograph, especially with the clarity of these. But to Meyer, this remarkable photography had become commonplace. The video crew hiked to the site where an old farmhouse stood near the edge of a steep mountain cliff. This is the location where Mr. Meyer filmed both still photographs and 8mm motion pictures. Meyer remembers that when he first arrived at the site, he was nervous, excited, and wanted to begin the experience immediately. Then, without warning, the beam ships arrived. As in previous segments, the ship is not affected by the strong wind currents. He also noted that they repeated the same stable movements exhibited in the past. In the lower part of the screen, automobiles can be seen traveling on this major thoroughfare. Meyer captured the same scene with one addition, a UFO hovering overhead. This amazing footage captures known objects, cars, and an unknown object, the beam ship, on the same frame.
Here, the Japanese utilized the freeze frame technique in order to determine the size relationship of the beam shift to the car. This 1979 MTV footage shows the site where Meyer shot his 1975 sequence of the beam ship hovering near a farmhouse. As this footage dissolves to Meyer's original film, note the beam ship beginning an aerial display above a large tree which once stood near the farmhouse. Meyer recalls that he was guided telepathically to the location and that the weather was bad. Snow and rain fell throughout the day. Once again, the erratic movement of the craft gives the appearance of an object suspended by a string or wire. Close examination of the film clearly shows the craft circling behind the large tree. When the size of the beam ship is compared to that of the tree and the house, it becomes obvious that due to its size, it would be impossible to suspend with strings or wire. In addition, the top of the enormous tree can be seen to move as the craft passes over it. This movement can be attributed to the backwash of air created by the ship. Watch again. Once more, the branches can be seen to sway from the force of the beam ship. Mysteriously, within three hours after the filming, Meyer noted that the tree began to die. Inside of three months, the tree was gone, leading to the conclusion that perhaps the electromagnetic radiation or energy contained some harmful elements that might have killed the tree. This segment clearly illustrates that the Pleiadian beam ships are capable of transcending dimensions at will. Watch closely. The craft is seen hovering in the upper portion of the screen. Then suddenly, it will literally jump down to a point just above the knoll in the lower center of the screen. You see, if she jumps, it's always like a flash on the knoll. Now we will examine the film frame by frame. Analysis failed to detect any alteration or trickery in the film. At the moment of the dematerialization or jump, the scene becomes very bright, unreasonably bright. Could there be a correlation between Meyer feeling an electrical shock during the contacts and the film becoming brighter? Now, analyze the beam ship's dematerialization scenes we reviewed earlier. Three frames prior to the disappearance, a green exposure is observed in the lower part of the scene. The same phenomenon occurs within three frames of the return of the craft. It is believed that this film indicates that the beam ship is emitting some sort of energy within 3 twentieths of a second, just before the ship dematerializes or rematerializes. We close this investigative report with some final comments from Mr. Edward Meyer. The materialism way doesn't the true way mm -hmm. for the life of a human being. Mm -hmm. There are 
two points who are very important, or they are very important. That's the materialism way and the spiritual way. Mm -hmm. They have to work together. Mm -hmm. Not only one of them have to work. And to change this again to the real way, to the connected way by materialism way and spiritual way, they come here again to teach the earth people over some few minutes. Mm. So, uh, how That's many... the only reason they have. That's their own saying. Not to, to bring war to earth or to bring peace to the human here on earth by themselves. Mm -hmm. If we want peace and knowledge and love and everything here on earth, we have to change everything by ourselves as human beings from this earth. This true story that took place in Switzerland is far beyond common knowledge or understanding. The beam ship footage taken by Edward Meyer is astonishing, but it's so clear that it's almost too good to be true. Because of this, there are many people who do not believe this case is real. Despite this, the evidence presented in this video investigation has been backed by facts from many scientific fields of study. Still, each individual must personally decide for themselves their levels of beliefs concerning UFOs in general, and more particularly, this case. <laughs>